as Craig said, I'm the Drought Response Coordinator for New South Wales. Uh, so today, but this evening, I'm actually going to um, step sideways a bit and try and uh, talk in a little more depth um, about one of the issues that Matt discussed, and that's about the, uh, the loss of fish through water diversions in New South Wales. So um, by day, uh, irrigation, uh, sorry, uh, Drought Response Coordinator. Um, by night, uh, something that you might find quite surprising when you're looking at a short, fat, balding, middle-aged public <laughs> servant. Uh, and that's the fact that I've managed to convince a woman, in fact a very beautiful woman, to have four children with me. Um, and the consequence of having four children, as many of you will know, that I've spent pretty much every Saturday morning since about 1923 coaching children's sport. Um, I don't know how many others in this room uh, have sort of had that joy of the very fulfilling, calm, not frustrating uh, process of herding seven-year-old cats around a soccer field, or in my case, a cricket pitch, a hockey field, an indoor hockey field, a netball case, or a chess competition, you name it, I have coached children in that endeavour. Um, I'm not a particularly good coach because I really only use one training drill, regardless of the sport. I just tend to adapt it from one sport to the next. And, and it's the classic game called Rob the Nest. Uh, so I can adapt this to any sporting uh, endeavour that you like. It's a very simple process. You start with four people in four corners and you have a nest in the middle, which is made up of spherical objects, ovoid objects, square objects, chess pieces, you name it. Um, and when the game starts, people from the corners run in and try and rob the nest. They try and grab the things and take it back to their own nest. But when the resource runs out in the middle, then we run and you start stealing the, the eggs, the balls, the ovoid spherical objects from other people's nests. Um, but the interesting thing about this game is that it goes on and on and on as people run and steal more eggs from other people's nests. But it never ends, because when you're off stealing other people's nests, eggs to try and replenish your stores, other people are stealing eggs from your own nest. And it goes on and on and on. And so why am I talking about this rather bizarre analogy? Well, I tend to feel, after 22, three years of working with fish in the basin, that we are stuck in an eternal game of Rob the Nest. Every year there are millions of fish out there doing their darndest to try and reproduce, doing their darndest to try and replicate their genetic material, and doing their absolute darndest to try and populate the rivers with their eggs. And every year there are hundreds of staff, both in government and private hatcheries, that are doing their absolute darndest to breed fish, to restock our rivers, and they're placing those fish back to improve the health of our rivers and the, and the fishing opportunities for, for wreck fishes. But as Matt has shown us, as Martin has discussed, and as Steve has indicated, we tend to be going backwards. We're stuck in this eternal game of rob the nest. And the reason is very complex, but one of, one of the very significant reasons is that when we take water out of rivers, we lose huge numbers of fish with that water. Now I'm going to stop here and provide a bit of a caveat. I'm not putting, pointing the finger here at any one industry. If you like to eat, you're part of the process that extracts water from rivers. If you like to wear clothes, you're part of the process that extracts water from rivers. If you like thriving rural economies that give social amenity, if you like mining, you like construction, if you like to turn the tap on and have water come out of it, you're part of the process that extracts water from rivers. So we're not labelling the blame here in any given industry. I'm talking merely about a fact that happens when we take water out of rivers. And the reality is when we take water out, we take fish with it. Matt gave some numbers, um, extrapolating out some work from Queensland. There are dozens of these studies. I'll, I'll focus on one other one. Um, we, we did some work uh, in the late 90s down in the Murray River, and we analysed the number of eggs and larvae and juvenile fish that were extracted through five diversions, only five. And as Matt showed, um, there are, th these are five canal diversions. And over one season, we extrapolated out that 41 million Murray cod eggs and larvae were removed through five irrigation diversions. 
Now, if you apply a pretty standard modelling context to that, to about survivability from eggs and larvae to, um, through to fingerlings, that means that we lost very conservatively about 1.1 million Murray cod, golden perch and silver perch fingerlings through those five diversions. Now, if we put that in the context, as Matt also I don't know, um, raised the figure, that as a government, we, DPI Fisheries, produce somewhere between one and a half to two and a half million fingerlings per year. And that's with multiple hatcheries, multiple staff, with the best endeavours that we possibly could. And we're cancelling that out over five, six or seven diversions, uh, you know, in over 500 kilometres of river. So this speaks to how significant this problem is. It is the eternal rob the nest. Every time we're doing things to promote the, the, the numbers of eggs and larvae and juveniles in our, in our rivers, we're simply, when we're looking the other way, we're losing orders of magnitude more fish from our nests because we're off focusing on something else. So that's the bad news. The good news is there's a solution. In fact, this solution's been 100 years in the making. Um, people have been screening irrigation diversions, um, water offtakes, any time they take water out of the United States and in, North and, and in Europe, screening is part of their culture, it's what they do. And so there are a range of techniques that have been employed across, uh, across the world to stop the phenomenon of fish being sucked out of rivers. And so we know that these work. We've done studies in Australia and every time we've put experimental um, uh, diversion screens on offtakes, as an absolute minimum, we reduce the overall entrainment by 90%. So if we go back to my numbers, about 1.1 million fingerlings, you know, in five diversions, we look at Matt's numbers of hundreds of millions of, of fish being removed. This is possibly one of the most significant way we can keep more fish in rivers right across the basin. So we've got a problem, we've quantified that problem, we know how much the, that impact is, and we've got a solution. Now, I st first started banging on about this about 15 years ago, and I'm standing here 15 years later, and there are a handful, I can count on one hand, the number of fish screens that are operational uh, in the Murray-Darling Basin. And so we've got to ask ourselves why? And this is my last slide, and I think somewhere in this image is possibly the reason why, or possibly the reason our way forward. And it's not the irrigation screen, but this was installed actually this week in, in the Lachlan River at Cowra. Um, it's not the three millimetre wedge wire, which we've trialled in laboratories to look at approach velocity. It's not the rotating brush screen that keeps it clean and, and reduces debris. The thing here that made this happen are the people standing next to it. It's the relationships that were built around this space. It's the understanding between industry, between irrigators, between the irrigation supply industry, that's Brett Kelly from AWMA, and from scientists and fisheries biologists. Behind this camera is Craig Boys, who's dedicated the last decade of his career to try and understand more about the impacts of irrigation, of, of irrigation losses and our opportunities to mitigate that through fish screens. And I think that this is the key. We need to build on those relationships. Anyone that's spent any time with me in a professional context will get quite bored of my saying that natural resource management is a social process. We don't manage fish by managing the fish themselves. We manage fish by managing the way people interact with fish. And so, as Martin had one take-home point, I'm going to have one take-home point. And that's that if we are to get real change, real momentum for screening, it's not about creating enemies out there. It's not about creating an argument that there's good guys and bad guys or that certain sectors or industries are, doing, are, are wreaking havoc upon our rivers. We need to start that dialogue. We need to build that relationship and make genuine partnerships with industry so that they can be part of the process, part of a solution, and don't feel threatened by what is obviously you know, a, a very significant impact of, of you know, people's day-to-day -day business. But we need to focus more on those relationships, focus on the social, focus on the positive things that we can demonstrate to people through irrigation screening, 
And it's only then that I think we'll see transformation across landscape scales and we'll definitely keep more fish in rivers. Thank you very much.